Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today is a highly requested video. You guys have been asking me to do a once upon a point about how I got my contract with Miami City Ballet. Uh, so before we go back to the New York City Ballet stories, which there are still a lot more, I thought since this is new, since I'm about to be back on stage in a month or so, I would love to tell you this story because I really haven't gone into detail about it. So if you're new to my channel, basically once upon a point are stories of my time at New York City Ballet where I was a soloist or with Miami City Ballet. So sit back, relax, and let's get into it. Okay, so jumping back to about, I'd say last fall, um, I think I did a Q&A video where I said, you guys had asked me if I was dancing again, and I said yes, and I had plans, and, da -da -da, and I was very evasive about it. Um, at that point, I was getting back in shape, and I was starting to think about contacting companies. I realized that for me, the most likely scenario, and the thing I really wanted to do because of how I was trained, was to go into a company similar to New York City Ballet. Miami came to mind. I have a lot of people I know in the company, and a lot of people suggested to me, why don't you try Miami? And I knew Lourdes Lopez uh, just through people. I had met her once or twice before when I was supposed to dance with Christopher Wielden's small company Morphosis back when I was like 18. But that ended up falling through. I don't think they did very many years and I ended up having to finish high school. <laughs> so my dad was like, you're not doing any other extra things until you finish high school. So I did not end up dancing for Morphosis, but Lourdes worked for Morphosis. So we kind of just knew each other, knew of each other. She had seen me dance several times in New York. Um, and I, I looked at the rep here, the rep is amazing. It's still very Balanchine Robbins, classical, you know, everything that I was used to. Um, and so it seemed like a great fit for me. And so I sent her an email. I said, hi, um, this is Catherine Morgan. I don't know if you remember me from City Ballet, blah, blah, blah. Um, I was a soloist and I, did, I listed the resume and the whole thing. And she sent me very, a lovely email back saying, um, of course I remember you, I've seen you dance several times. Um, so great to hear you're getting back in shape. I'd love to have you come down and audition. So why don't you um, try and come down for three to five days, which I think is fantastic. That's the way Miami City Ballet does it. I think, I believe they do hold big auditions um, and that's sort of a new thing for them. But what they like dancers to do is come down for several days because they know that if you get one shot in company class, you might be still swollen from the plane, you're gonna be nervous, you're gonna be off your leg from traveling. So they like to see the dancer over a period of three to five days, which is fantastic. So she said, why don't you coordinate with the company manager and come down for a few days and take class with us. Great. I had also contacted a couple of other directors of companies, but Miami was absolutely my first choice, to be totally honest with you, of the people I contacted. And they didn't have any spots. It was, it was a weird thing, this particular cycle. Very few companies had openings. Many companies were getting rid of dancers. It was just a very tight year, and I think anybody who auditioned knows that. No one had anything um, at the time. So Lourdes had come down, auditioned. So I went down in February. I believe it was like the 10th through the 14th. Didn't tell, obviously, the internet world, but I really didn't tell that many people, even close friends, because I just wanted to keep it for me. You know, let's say I didn't get hired. Let's say it went badly. Let's say I didn't like the company. You know, this is one of those things you just, I like to never count the chickens, so I just kept it to myself, told a few people. And the minute I walked in the building, I was blown away. I was just like, whoa, because the facility is incredible. We have eight studios. Um, and just like this huge building this expand, you know, spans the entire block and just like everything. And people were so nice. Hi. And I was like, <laughs> hi, you know, because typically if you go into a company audition, there's like, you know, but everybody was so welcoming. I knew a lot of people, so that helped. Um, and so the first class that I took was horrendous. I was a bundle of nerves because I had never really auditioned for a company before. Remember you guys, when you're at School of American Ballet, if you get taken into New York City Ballet, there's no audition. You just go right into the company. So I didn't really know what I was doing, to be totally honest with you. And so I took company class that first day, couldn't do a thing. It was like, Catherine Morgan had never danced a day in her life. And so then I watched rehearsal a little bit. I think they were rehearsing Four Temperaments. And just, I remember sitting there and like, even just being overwhelmed that I was even thinking about doing this again. 
you know, I was, I'm sitting here watching Miami City Ballet rehearse Balanchine's Four Temperaments. Like, I hadn't done that in years. I hadn't seen a Balanchine Ballet in front of me in years. So I just kind of watched and observed and had dinner with a couple of people that I knew. And, and the next couple of days, class got better. Lourdes would come in and watch. Other ballet masters come in and watch um, to give their two cents. On, I believe it was the third day. I think it was the third day I went up to Lourdes' office and we had an over an hour conversation, which was so lovely. It was, it was about me and my life and what happened and we just talked about personal stuff, with stuff that had nothing to do with ballet. She wanted to know about my career and what I was doing and why, you know, the, the big gap and everything. And, and she was so relatable and kind and I felt so comfortable. It didn't feel like, you know, a terrible, like, I'm going to die job interview kind of thing, but we just chatted. And I think that's really important, to be honest with you. And at the end of the conversation, she said, well, we're in the middle of budget talks. Things are happening right now. I don't know what I have in terms of spots. And she said, so let me, hang tight. Let me get back to you. So I did the fourth day, which ended up being my best dancing day, and flew back to New York. Um, and it was quite a while before I actually heard from her. And I'd started to get a little bit nervous um, because I had, I'd started to hear that she had, like, taken her core people and because she took eight this year a we have eight new core members so I was starting to like panic of okay well maybe I didn't get it then in March Sean Rolfson and I did that gig of Romeo and Juliet and Giselle which I'll link the Romeo and Juliet footage I have not actually put up the Giselle footage yet interesting to note mental note okay I'll remember that um, we did that gig I still hadn't heard and so I, I had started to kind of at that point feel like well she doesn't have anything you know um, it's fine, I'll think about something else. And at that point, to be honest, no other companies had any spots, so I hadn't done any other auditions. Miami was the only one that I did. I didn't really know how it worked, remember, so I was a little bit late in contacting people. It's really good, you guys, if you want to contact companies for auditions, literally do it January 1st, January 2nd, like right away. Um, it's kind of like summer courses. Like the earlier you do it, the better, um, because spots go. So I had kind of, to be totally honest with you, given up at that point. And she had even sent me an email in there somewhere of like, still working on it. I don't know what we have. I, you know, right now things are up in the air. So I kind of figured that that was it. So April 1st, <laughs> April Fool's Day, I get a call from her. She says, hi, do you have time to chat? And I was like, nah, I don't have to, of course I have time to chat. You know, I was like, this is Lourdes Lopez. I said, yes, absolutely. And she said, you know, I have now figured things out and I would very much like to offer you a soloist contract with Miami City Ballet. <laughs> At that point, I was like, in my brain, I went, are you sure? But I didn't actually say that. So I, I was completely blown away. And then we, we spent another half an hour chatting about logistics and on the phone and what it's going to be like and rep. And I was completely shocked because I had really honestly given up on it. Like I, I had started to plan out my summer. I literally planned out six to seven weeks of teaching because I thought, well, I'm not gonna be dancing, so I'll just book my summer up. Ended up being wonderful but exhausting. Um, so that was already done. I had started to like plan for next year, like gigs or things. And she offered me the contract. And then she said at the end of the conversation, she said, I know it's already April, but um, because you're coming in as a soloist, we're actually having one of our ballets staged in May. Can you start early in May? Because we're just going to be staged for next year. Um, she said, not everyone new will start, but I need you if you can make it. So I ended up starting May 10th-ish, May 14th, middle of May. So not only did I get a contract, I literally started like in a month. So it was incredible. It was incredible. So I came down for two weeks, and that was actually a godsend because I you know, we started our full season at the end of July, but I was able to kind of come for two weeks, only have to learn one ballet, figure out the lay of the land, get the lay of the people of the building and everything, so that when we started July 1st, I'm sorry, at the end of July for this upcoming season, I already knew what I was doing, and that was so, so helpful. So, yeah, and that was it, and then I think I they mailed me the contract, and I signed it, on, it was dated April 4th, which as I said to you guys, April 4th of last year is when my personal life fell apart and I found out everything. So literally a year to the day that my life fell apart, 
I signed my contract with Miami City Ballet. So it was quite amazing. Um, and of course, my parents were there. I was actually visiting home that during April. So I was with my parents when I got the call, which was just so incredible. Um, and then I was literally like flying back to New York, I think the following day. So I had to like figure out New York apartments and Miami apartments. And it was a crazy couple of months. And then I was, while trying to move here, I was off teaching because I had filled up my summer with teaching. Um, and so it was one of the craziest summers I've ever had in my life. <laughs> like it was nuts. But I, you know, wouldn't have changed it and uh, started here um, July 29th, I think is when we started. And I literally, day one, like I told you in the last video, the update, I started with Firebird, day one. Like, okay, good luck. So that's basically the story. I mean, I'm so fortunate in that, that it happened. And I know it sounds like this fairy tale, but you guys have to remember the last nine years of my life were really, a lot was tough. So, you know, while yes, it's an amazing story, it, and it sounds like, oh, it all worked out, it was rough. It was very, very rough. But, um, you know, if this gives you inspiration to deal with what you're dealing with, I really hope it does. Um, because I, I as, as I've said many, many times on here, I thought I would never dance again. I went three years within that time period, not even putting on a point shoe. If I did, it was for YouTube, and I, it had it on for like two seconds. And now I'm a soloist with Miami City Ballet rehearsing Firebird and Slaughter and other things. And it's just, it's insane. So um, that's that story. For the next Once Upon a Point, we will go back to the New York City Ballet stories. I believe the last one I told you was getting cast as Juliet. So I think the next one I will do is my first time doing Sugar Plum. I think that's what we'll do next time because that was basically the next big thing that I did. So anyway, I uh, really hope you guys love this video. If you like Once Upon a Point, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you turn on those bell notifications so you don't miss any new videos. If you missed my latest Q&A, it's right down there. You can click it to watch. Love you guys so much, and I will see you next time.